Welcome to the House on Fire podcast. Our aim is to light a fire for Jesus in the homes of those who listen through encouragement and equipping. Let's partner together to advance the gospel in the next generation. I am your host, Lucas Jackson, and I am passionate about seeing more people on fire for Jesus. When you listen to the House on Fire podcast, you'll hear from people you can rub shoulders with every week at Bethel Church, because all of our guests are from our church family. These are people striving to love God, love others, and to serve the world. Hey guys, we're excited for this episode. We have Allison on the podcast with us today. So Allison, uh, do a little intro. So, I mean, I'm sure many people know who you are, but we don't want to assume. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Well, my name is Allison Schmidlin. I am the Bethel Kids Director. I've been in this position for, gosh, I started in June 2020, right in the middle of COVID. So it's been about three years. Is that right? I like to round up and people it's tend perfect. to hold me accountable for that. So. I think I think it's totally fine. Not a problem. So we're glad to have you. Um, and yeah, so the conversation we're going to have today is fall 2023 Next Gen Ministries, which includes birth through 12th grade. So we got lots of things that we're doing this coming up fall. And so we just thought we'd get together and have a conversation about kind of what we're doing in kids ministry, middle school ministry, high school ministry, leaning on a couple of things um, that we feel the Lord's put on our heart. And so we'll just kind of kind of dive in a little bit. So yeah. so just to start it off with, just tell us why, uh, tell us about uh, Sunday morning kids ministry. And we'll kind of divide out Sunday morning and Wednesday night, just I think for ease of conversation. But, but tell us uh, about Sunday morning kids ministry coming up this fall. Yeah, we're super excited. We got some changes coming, but... Essentially, Sunday morning kids ministry is a time for us to provide some discipleship opportunity for kids during the service that really is catered more to what kids can understand, right? Um, Kids understand the Bible in a different way than maybe an adult does, and we try to teach them at the level that they can understand. So um, we're super excited. We, our elementary program used to have large groups, or our large group Think of it like children's church used to happen in the gym, but we have transitioned to the FLC where we'll now have that time of worship and um, Bible lesson that happens in there. And um, then they'll split up into their small groups for the rest of the morning where they have some intentional discipleship time with kids who are in the same grade as them. And then our preschool program takes place down in the kids wing. Very similar format. It's just they stay in their classrooms the whole time yeah. um, with same aged kids. So, and by you making which which we're really grateful for traditions, kind of giving us a little bit of time yes. and space in there, which is great. By moving kids from the gym into the FLC, that keeps everybody closer together. It's an easier space to use. Uh, I think it'll. I think we've talked about it allows us to kind of be more creative and have more fun. And there's less kind of. Back and forth. Back and forth yeah. for the kids. So Yeah, I don't know if everyone's noticed, but we have a brand new check-in wall in the foyer yeah. um, that we're super pumped about. We we really just want to keep our kids safe. And I know sometimes it seems tedious having to check your kids in first at the check-in station, and then you have to take them to their room and get them checked in. But yeah. we're really just trying to make sure that kids are getting where they're supposed to be and that they are being picked up by who they're supposed to be picked up by. Um, your child's safety is our honestly our number one concern on a Sunday morning because we're in charge of them. Yeah. And so we're super excited for that check-in wall, but it's really more in the vicinity of where the kids' wing is. And now, instead of traveling to the gym, Kids can just be dropped off right there in the FLC and get yeah. checked in in there. Um, so it's just more of a central location for us to have kids ministry on Sunday morning. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, most families come in, you know, in the south parking lot, they enter the south doors, and then there's the new check-in wall there so they can check their little kiddos in, birth through fifth grade, and then they can drop them off in the FLC, and then they can head head on into church. Um, and then they'll pick up their kids uh, in the classroom down the, the, down the kids, kids wing. wing. So, yep. Which is three levels, you know, basement, main floor, and an and a upper floor for those who aren't aware of that. Yeah. But then fifth grade is going to be over in – so talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So we have a separate um, 
option for we call them our preteens. It used to be fifth and sixth grade, but now sixth grade is a part of yeah. um, Bethel students. And so we continued to keep that preteen class and it's just our fifth graders. Um, they are getting to the stage where they feel too old to be in kids ministry, which I get. And so it's hard yeah. for them to be a part of uh, they tend to choose not to come because they don't want to be with the little kids. So we wanted to create an atmosphere yes. where they still want to come and, and be discipled. So they will take um, their class will take place in room 120, which is located in the gym. Yeah. Um, and we've kind of broken that up. They get a 20 minutes of hangout time in the gym, can play basketball. They can do other activities in the in what we might be calling the youth room now. I don't know. Um, yeah, we're it's going to be used a lot yeah. for, for uh, fifth through 12th grade. Yeah. So. And so Pastor Lucas has graciously stepped up to kind of lead that group of fifth graders as an opportunity to get to know them before they enter into youth, which will be yeah. next the following year. Yeah. So um, super excited about about that. And then we'll have other leaders in there who will take on roles as kind of like a small group leader during that time. So they'll have a lesson and then get to have intentional time with a, a leader or two to dig into what they just read in scripture. Yeah. So, And, and uh, we use the Gospel Project curriculum, which tell us a little about the scope and sequence of that and, and how that helps us to for, the, for us to point the kids to Christ. Yeah, so the Gospel Project on Sunday mornings, we use that in um, infant, well, not infant, probably more toddlers through uh, fourth grade. And um, it is known for taking kids in a three-year sequence. It takes them through the entire Bible. So from Genesis to Revelation, um, we will take more of about a four-year sequence because we take Sunday summers, not Sundays. We're definitely there on Sundays. We take yeah. summers off. So in four years, um, your child, if they're there for the four-year span, they will go from Genesis to Revelation to learn the entire Bible, and then we'll start over. So, for example, Gunner is in kindergarten, um, so he, he will get to go through the entire Bible, um, and then we'll start over, and he'll get more yeah. emphasis on on those sections as well when he gets into the upper grades. So um, it's it's ran off of a large group time where we someone teaches the lesson, teaches the scripture and what it means for that morning, and then they break up into small groups where they dig more into the Bible and actually look up scripture and also do some activities that kids do well off of movement and doing things. Yeah. So we do some activities that help drive home whatever that concept was for that morning. Yeah, for sure. And not to oversimplify things, but but give us the why on why we do kids ministry at, at Bethel Church. Like, I mean, I don't want to, it seems cliche to even ask that, I think, but I don't ever want to assume like, like the biblical foundation of reasons on why we do things. And so tell us a little bit about that. Um, so why we do kids ministry at Bethel Church. I, I do find a lot of value in kids going to church as well. If yeah. you ever if you ever ask me, I say I would love for your child to come at nine a.m. for kids and then also attend church with you the second service. Yeah. Um, I know it's tough with those really little ones, and those ones are an exception. But I think when they get to four or five, I know it's hard. Believe me, I just spent my my son is just <laughs> yeah. turned five, so it's difficult, and I get that. But for Gunner to watch Chris and I worship the Lord and yeah. what it's like. Um, to serve him and to learn his word and what it's like in corporate worship, I think I find value in that. Yeah. So I don't want to take away, like, I don't, anyone to think we don't find value in that. I think our ministry does find value in you taking your child to church. But there is also value in your child being discipled by someone else um, who knows and loves the Lord, but yeah. also at a age-appropriate level. Yeah. Um, a lot, Gunner doesn't understand much of what's going on in church when we take him. I don't take him for that. I take him for him to experience what it means to be a church body and yeah. what it means to worship together. Yeah. And then the kids ministry part is for him to really understand at his level what scripture that we're talking about means, um, and what it means to actually have a relationship with Jesus Christ at a level that he can understand. Yeah. Um, so I think there's just value in having those two ideas and which is why we have kids ministry on yeah. a Sunday morning, not to just provide, um, this is the, the word we don't use in kids ministry, but child care. Oh, we're we're oh, not geez. child care. We are providing, uh, we're, we are ministering to our kids out there. Yes. So, 
Yeah, I kind of uh, barked at a staff member the other day. I was like, "No, no, no, no. we don't do, don't say that. No, that's not true. Yeah, we don't do child care. We uh, we don't do child care. We do sure. discipleship, so, child yeah. discipleship. Yes. Well, so let's tra- so that's kind of Sunday morning, kind of big picture. So let's transition Wednesday night kids ministry, and so tell us uh, a little bit about like what we do there and what happens and all that fun stuff. Yeah. So Wednesday night Bethel Kids, which most of you probably are. Um, Con- maybe confused or or wondering why don't why aren't we calling it Awana anymore? So that's probably the the term most of you when you think of Wednesday nights. We used to s- just refer to it as Awana. Yeah. Um, we as a team have just really been looking at why do we do Wednesday nights? Why do we use Awana as the curriculum? Yeah. Why did we call it Awana? So to just bring some clarity to that, we want to be known as Bethel Kids Ministry. Yeah. When a kid goes to school and tells them where they're going on a Wednesday night, we don't want them to say we're going to Awana because Awana is the the program, the curriculum we use. Yeah. They're going to Bethel Kids on Wednesday nights. Yeah. Um, it refers back to the church, which is where we want people to come to because that's yeah. where we disciple people. Um, but we use the curriculum Awana to do that. Awana is a great curriculum that, um, I don't know, we've been using it here at Bethel. And I'm going to get this wrong, but I, I want to say upward of 30 years. Okay. Um, so it has a longstanding... Um, reputation here at yeah. Bethel and we support a lot of Awana missionaries we do. and yeah. um, but the the even the curriculum itself the people who create Awana are saying you need to make Awana fit your church yeah so not everything in that program fits here at Bethel and yep. and let me explain why we are seeing and I think not even at Bethel at many churches these days we are seeing a shift in parent involvement yeah. in their kids' discipleship. Yeah. And so, and what I mean by that is it's lessening. Yeah. They're spending less time sitting down with their sons and daughters and opening scripture up. And, and my, my assumption is not asking as many spiritual, uh, not spiritual questions, but just questions about their faith, that, that that's happening less. For sure. Yeah. And and if you know anything about Awana, it's based off of a handbook that they yeah. take home. And this handbook has scripture that they each week need to memorize and then other um, components, especially the older they get, they have questions they need to answer. It's kind of like a Bible study. Yeah, kind of like homework. Yes, like yeah. like we don't want to call it that there. Yeah, the yeah. kids will be like, heck no. But it's like uh, additional devotional time yes. they can have throughout the week. And it's meant so that the parents can be involved in, in discipling their kids at home because parents are yeah. what? The number one disciple Absolutely. in the child's life. And But we're noticing that's not happening. And yeah. I've only been doing this for three years, but over the past three years, we've noticed kids, 75% or more of our kids who come on Wednesday nights are coming without their verse memorized and without their book completed. Yeah. And that that's just showing us that parent involvement is not the same. Yeah. And so we need to shift the way we're doing ministry then, because if that's happening, then the kids are missing 50% of what they should could be learning because yeah. it's not happening at home. Yeah. So... What does that look like? Well, we've decided we're lessening the number of sections that they have to complete um, because it's just becoming too much for parents to do. Maybe if we lessen it, they'll be more likely to do it at home. We're also shifting. Usually it's go home, do something, come back and learn about it. Yeah. Now we're shifting. We're going to do it all. We're going to learn about it. We're going to teach you that yeah. scripture and what it means then you're going to go home and yeah. hopefully re- be reinforced. Yeah. But if the reinforcement isn't happening, at least it's happening here. Yeah. Um, and to give a little bit more context, like when you say lessing, uh, fewer lessons, uh, we weren't like because the Iwana book itself it gives us like fifty two weeks of curriculum, which we don't we don't meet fifty two weeks a year. Yeah. On Wednesday night, so really the in order for the those who are part of the uh, Wednesday night kids ministry, in order for them to actually get through the whole book, they had to do like two lessons a week. Yes, right. Exactly. So, so it, it it was a little. It was a mo- it was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah. yeah. So we're just doing enough. You know, I can't even. Nicole Lofgren is our Wednesday night coordinator, so yeah. she's the pro on all things Awana. Yeah. And um, I want to say we have we meet thirty two weeks. That sounds about and right. And so we used to double up so that we could get 
because the book has more than 32 weeks of lessons. Yeah. We used to double up so we could get everything done because if we don't get it done, then, you know, something bad's going to happen, but that's not true. Yes. And so we decided, nope, we're going to do one a week. And so our directors went through the books and picked the ones that that are foundational for a child's faith. Yeah. Um, and so now we're just doing one a week. And, and sometimes last year we had five snow days. Yeah. So then that we started like tripling up so that we could, and we could just feel this tension of we not like parents and leaders were like, we have to get this done. No, no, we're, we're here to disciple kids. And yeah. that doesn't mean a book isn't going to bring a child to know the Lord, right? Yeah. Um, we, we don't want to be so focused on completing these books. Or Honestly, don't get me wrong. Memorizing scripture is huge. The yeah. Lord calls us to do it. Yeah. You're supposed to hide the Lord's word in your heart. And we think that we value that a lot. But we don't want that to be so much focused on that kids are like, I don't want to go on Wednesday nights anymore. Yeah. It's just drilling me on these verses all the time. We want yeah. them to to learn what the word says, whether that means they memorize it or they just understand the gist of a verse. Yeah. To me, that's more valuable. Um, if they can understand, I know there's this verse that says, you know, whatever, it's is beneficial to them. And we also have kids who struggle with memorizing verses and, and to drill that home with them. We found like, we just really need to reevaluate how we do Wednesday nights well. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and I think, and we've talked a little bit about this, but that Awana the, has become an idol in a sense. Like, 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 like Awana itself is this thing that, can have higher priority than the scripture itself and mm. some people's hearts and minds, which we don't want. Like we, we, we want families to value the scripture, uh, you know, here at, at Bethel, we say gather, grow, grow. So we, we gather as a church family, we, we grow together. So we have life groups for, for every phase of life. So for kids to be able to have, be in a life group and, and help them to find ways to serve. And so we, we, we don't want them to value Awana, because it's not this curriculum that has brought about the discipleship in the context of Bethel Church. It's it's the moms and dads and the students who show up every week to pour into the lives of those kids. It's those. It's Bethel Church yeah. who is passing off our faith to the next generation. So it's not this curriculum that's doing that. It's God's people in the context of our church doing that. Yeah, yeah. We found we found that um, it, it it gets touchy when someone hears and and we've experienced this even just with the ch- shift in calling it Wednesday night yeah. Bethel kids we've already experienced tension what you're not doing awana oh, you know n- no we are using we are still using awana as the curriculum but yeah. awana is not what's discipling these kids yeah. it's these leaders who have stepped up to spend atten- intentional time teaching God's word to the kids. And yeah. and we just wanted to make sure that this this curriculum, we don't call when uh, Sunday mornings gospel project. We yeah. call it Sunday Bethel Kids. We yeah. use the gospel project. We're using Awana as a tool. It's not what we're all about. What yeah. we're all about is partnering with families to what? Help kids love God passionately, love others intentionally and serve the world sacrificially. Yeah. Absolutely. But we use Awana to help us do that. Yeah. So let's uh, go through what a typical Wednesday night would look like in kids' ministry. Yeah. So there's a few changes this year to Wednesday nights. Um, One being we are now going to have all kids use the check-in wall to check in. We never did that on Wednesday nights, mainly due to just the chaos of a a Wednesday night. (laughs) There's a lot of them running around. There's a lot of them. (laughs) This is a lot. But it didn't really match up with our desire to keep kids safe. So it felt like we only wanted to keep kids safe on Sundays, but not Wednesdays. And yes. so, which really wasn't the heart and desire, but that, yes, but just, there was more focus of that on Sunday morning yeah. than there was Wednesday night from a check in perspective. Yes. And to keep consistency and just it, why aren't we doing the same thing on Wednesday nights? So yeah. it's just going to be similar to a Sunday morning. Parents will check their kids in, um, kids will get a name tag, parents will get a parent pickup tag that they'll have yeah. to present to their leaders to be. Re- to be released. And if, yeah. if they don't have it, we're going to ask for a form of ID um, it's, or ask you to go grab it or whatever that looks like. Yeah. Um, but it's a, it is a change that's going to be new to families sure. on a Wednesday. Uh, another thing is we are no longer using the uniforms that yeah. go along with Awana. So normally you have like a cubby vest and a cubby bag and a Sparks uh, vest and a TNT 
I think they called it a jersey. Yeah. We've decided to go away from that and we created our own Bethel Kids t-shirts. So Cubby's t-shirt is a dark blue, just like Cubby Bear, and it has Bethel Kids on the front and our mission statement on the back. And then on their sleeve, it has the picture of Cubby yeah. the bear. Um, Sparks, same thing, front and back, but then it has a Sparks on the sleeve and TNT, same thing. It's green and has the TNT logo on the sleeve. So still identifying um, what club they're in. But our desire for that is when they go to church, not church, when they go to school that yeah. Wednesday, right? They're, we're going to encourage, we're going to teach the kids, wear your shirt to school. And hopefully yeah. what happens is friends of yours start noticing, why do you always wear that shirt on Wednesdays? Yeah. And give them the opportunity to invite them not to Awana, but to Bethel Kids. Yeah. Come, We would love for you to come on a Wednesday night and see what we do there where we and then they can talk about what well what do you do there well here's the three things we do most of them will probably start out with we play really fun games during game time yeah that's what brings kids on wednesday nights and i'm okay with that if if we get them in the building to play games and learn they then get to learn about jesus right, right. um we you know we get we we learn about jesus in our small groups and we're taught stuff from the bible yeah. um and the older they get, they can explain that to their friends a little deeper. But younger kids, yeah. like that's just the gist of what we want. We're, they're using it as an evangelistic tool to mm -hmm. invite their kids to come not to Awana, but to Bethel Kids because their yeah. shirt says right on it, Bethel Kids. Yeah. So super excited about those um, T-shirts and what that will mean for the kids when it comes to evangelizing to their friends at school. Yeah, absolutely. And this year, too, I think there's a, a pretty intensive value on helping train up and equip our leaders. And so and we've talked a lot about just, you know, to reiterate the fact that, hey, we would value all of our leaders to uh, physically attend our church, like to be here, to sit under the authority of Scripture. And this is where we're headed. This is where our vision and mission is, uh, as a, a local body of believers is headed. And then, you know, find a, a group of people, to a life group of people just to live life with and and to be held accountable and say the word. And then, you know, and obviously the, those who serve in, in our ministries, they're, they're serving. So gathering together and, and we're growing together and then we're serving collectively mm -hmm. together as leaders. And so any specific things you want to hit on about just uh, helping equip our leaders? Because I mean, a lot of the parents who are listening to this are going to be, be our leaders. And so yeah, you want to lean in on any of that specifically? Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think that we have just found that the more intentionality we put into equipping and 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 have hmm, I'm trying to find the right word and and allowing people to serve in kids and youth it's it has become a little more intentional and a little more strategic. So yeah. And what I mean by that is sometimes in kids ministry, if you don't know, and and youth ministry, we're reliant on volunteers. We can we cannot run kids ministry or youth ministry without people stepping in to help us disciple kids. Yeah. And sometimes that brings leaders who shouldn't. I'm, I mean, to be honest with you, who it's just not the right fit for them. Yeah. But sometimes we allowed it. I'm, I, we allowed it mm. it to happen because we needed people. Um, and not that these people were unfit, like bad people. It's yeah. just maybe wasn't their gift. For sure. Right. And so um, we're being more intentional about maybe, maybe this isn't your gift here. Let's get you plugged in somewhere else. Yeah. Or wow. Yeah. This really is a, a great spot for you. And we're, and we're doing that through interviewing, through just coaching while they're doing it, watching how they interact with kids, yeah. um, and then having intentional training moments throughout the year where we're equipping our leaders to disciple better. Yeah. So, um, and one of the big things, like you said, that we are really pushing is those three things. We want to make sure that you are worshiping to communal. Yeah. So like, not just coming to serve at 9 a.m. and going home. We yeah. want you to serve and then go to church um, because that's an important part of our, our faith. That's where we grow as a community and worship as a body. And then also, are you involved in a, in a group, in a, in a life group, in a disciple-making group where you are growing in your faith? Because if you're going to yeah. teach kids or youth about Jesus, you, you better believe you should be growing in your faith as well. Yep. And so just making sure that's happening with our leaders. Yeah. And those aren't things that we're like, well, oh, these are good suggestions for life. No, this is founded in scripture. I mean, mm -hmm. just, you could read the book of Acts and would encourage families to do this if they've ever done that. But, 
you know, pick a chapter every week and then answer a couple of questions. Like, who is the church and what does the church do? Well, the church physically gathers together. Like, it's a high value. There's there's a worship comp- a component. There's a, a, a component of where the scripture is being taught. Tithes and offerings, a communion, a church discipline. Those th- like those are the things that the book of Acts lays out for us. And, and so God's people gathering together. So it's not a like we think this is like a good idea mm-hmm. for people. No, no, no. This is a biblical value that yeah. that is seen all over the scripture that we're trying to live out as best we possibly can. Mm-hmm. Um, any before we kind of sw- uh, just kind of transition a little bit to middle school and high school ministry specific, any anything else you want to mention and 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 lean in a little bit at all in terms of kids ministry coming up this fall specifically? Yeah, there's just one thing I wanted to. Um, so on Wednesday nights, one of the things that has been um, brought to our attention is it there was a, a rather large cost increase. Yeah. Um, so for the past twenty years, the cost of Wednesday nights um, was thirty dollars, and you that included your oops, your fees and your book. Yeah. And then last year we upped it to thirty five dollars, just a five dollar increase. Um, again, including your fees and your book. And then you always had to pay for your uniform. That was yeah, always a vest. Yes. Yeah. So this year we took a look. I mean, we can all say everywhere in the world we have inflation. Yeah. Prices are going up. Our book prices went up for Awana. And then, um, sorry, Wednesday night, Wednesday night Bethel Kids. That's an Awana and book. Then, That's cool. Um, and then just fees. The fees include, like, we do something called the store um, so we're doing it twice a year this year. We have to purchase things for that store for the kids to take home. That yeah. that costs thousands. Uh, it's thousands of dollars for us to supply that store, yeah. and now we're doing it twice a year. Yeah. So those those uh, anytime we do some type of snack or special event, that's a fee. So that's what those fees include. Yeah. And then um, we switched to our t-shirts, which is the same thing. They aren't any more expensive than what the uniforms were. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to explain why prices were increased. We didn't, we're not making profit. It's yeah. not like we're like, oh, if we up this, we now Bethel Kids has extra money. No, yeah. we're like, we're, if we do at all, we're, we're landing even with yeah. the cost. And I want people to know, don't ever let the cost of, a, of Wednesday night prevent you from sending your kids. We have yeah. scholarships. We never want the price of of Wednesday night Bethel kids to be a reason that you don't send them. So please like reach out. We are no questions asked. We will give you a scholarship for your family. Yeah. So, yeah, I can think of 10 people off the top of my head who I could send a text message to right now and the, and they'd write a check. Yeah. I'd be like, Hey, I got this family. They need X amount of dollars. And they'll be like, the reply a hundred percent of the time is I'll bring it on Sunday. Yep. You know, and that's, yeah. Money is not, not an issue. We want, we don't ever want that to be an issue, but I just wanted people to understand yeah. why that price went up. Uh, it should have gone up slowly throughout the years, but we, we didn't. Um, and that was our failure on our part. So it was, it seems like a, you know, what is that? A $15 increase, $50. Yeah. Um, so it seems big, but just wanted people to know that that there was intention and a reason behind doing that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let me just touch base for a few minutes. Um, so historically in the past, we've had middle school and high school on Sunday nights. And so we've, we're kind of dividing them out. Well, actually even last year, sixth grade was under the umbrella of kids ministry. Yeah. So mm-hmm. now this year, kids ministry is birth through fifth grade. Middle school ministry is sixth through eighth. Um, middle school ministry will take place on Wednesday nights in conjunction with kids ministry, but we'll start just a tad earlier so we can use the gym and all that. Um, so we'll be six to seven forty-five on Wednesday nights. So uh, would encourage even families, or if you're going to drop your son or daughter off, just come into the north doors, come in the gym. Um, we'll have a time of of hanging out and uh, connecting with each other. We'll have a time of teaching, and we'll have a time of discipleship, life groups for our middle school students. And so it'll, it'll take place in the gym and in room twenty, uh, room one twenty, which is right off the gym. So excited about that! That allows us to communicate the gospel and truth in a way that is very relevant and understandable for middle school students. So, which then allows us to lean in even heavily more in with topics for high school students. So. So all things middle school will take place on uh, Wednesday night, and then high school students will take place on Sunday nights, um, as they have been in the past, so 4 to 6.30. But high school ministry, instead of use, using the FLC and kind of most of the church in many ways, um, and the kids' wing for small group stuff, but we're going to use the gym and room 120 as well. Mm-hmm. So we're um, 
really fifth grade on Sunday mornings will be in room 120, and then middle school on Wednesday nights will be in room 120, and then our high school students on Sunday nights will be in room 120. So we're revamping that space, um, putting some time, energy, and effort and some money into that space to make it as as great for us as humanly possible. And so, and many may be asking, like, well, why, why split out or, or divide out middle school and high school? Well, there's a lot of a lot of reasons actually. Um, a high schooler is like a giant in the eyes of a middle schooler. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, middle schools can be super quirky and they want to just and they're um, more oblivious and they're just kind of enjoying life. And high schoolers can sometimes be a little bit more serious. And so, um, but really the biggest value is the fact that like we can customize our teaching to both middle school and to high school. Um, we're we're going to talk about like LGBTQ conversations. We're going to talk about sex. We're going to talk about relational tension and all of those things. And for middle school, we need to be uh, less detailed, I would mm-hmm. say. Um, in high school, we need to be a little bit more detailed. And so that allows us to customize the teaching of the gospel in the lives of those students. And not only that, uh, in many ways, middle school and high schoolers, when they're combined, uh, it creates tension. Mm-hmm. Um, that I think we can eliminate some of that tension by having them separate. So that's just a couple of the reasons why we've kind of divided those uh, students out. I think it'll help our middle school ministry grow. I think it'll help our high school ministry grow. I think it's just helping us be more intentional um, behind what we're doing. And for those of you parents who, who are uh, curious, we're going to utilize a curriculum called GROW. And I say utilize because we don't, we primarily take some of the topics and the graphics, but we customize the teaching and, and we still write our own sermons. Um, just it allows us and it gives us space and some of the creativity side of things. And so, um, so I think it'll help us um, as well as we create a, a teaching team in the context of our middle school and uh, high school ministry. Uh, just a couple other things to highlight by doing middle school ministry on Wednesday nights. That allows high school students to still serve in kids ministry on Wednesday nights or those who are like, you know, I don't really want to serve kids. Like, okay, well, maybe they can serve middle school students. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would love to see if every small group we have on a Wednesday night where there's an adult leader and then right next to them is a high school student who's not, the high school student's not leading the group. They're co-leading. They're learning. They're observing. They're, they're literally seeing uh, what it looks like to pour into a group of people, a group, you know, for an adult to pour into a group of middle school boys or girls on a weekly basis. Like you, they're going to, oftentimes churches don't provide that until they're much yeah. older or in college or even later. So really, really excited. So about, here's the question. Are you having food on Sunday night? I know that's what all the yeah, that's parents true. are asking. That is true. Uh, so let me let me break down Sunday nights. I kind of broke down Wednesday nights for middle school, but for high school ministry on Sunday nights, yes, there, there will be food. So 4 to 6.30. Um, so come through the north doors, come to the gym. Um, and um, so we will have uh, a teaching time, a hangout time. Um, we'll have a, a worship uh, component. We've got lots of students who are involved on our student worship team. And then uh, we'll have about an hour of small group time. Um, and, and what they discuss and talk about is the message that was presented that evening. So then they flush that out even in more mm-hmm. detail that evening. And then we come back together, and that's when we eat all the things. So you eat at the end. So, we, yeah, we eat at the end. Um, and then there's usually a lot of students who will play chess and there's like a game killing Hitler or something that our students oh, really I know like. What you're talking about. So yeah. that's uh, the card. Like they get a card. And, yes. Yeah. They get a little lively on that one. Yeah. And so there's a lot that'll play games, and then there's a lot that like doing uh, nine square and mm. and basketball and gaga ball and all that kind of stuff. So by having us in the and this would be uh, um, just good to know. The reason we're going from the FLC to the gym in room 120 is that allows us to have our students closer together. Mm-hmm. Um, we've we've observed quite a bit, even throughout this summer. My observation is, uh, students like to just go off and do their own thing, mm-hmm. and they they can physically be in the same space, but they don't necessarily aren't connecting with the people there. So by by us kind of forcing and being in a smaller space, it allows us to maximize our time physically together. So this this is what we do on Sunday nights. We're, you know, we hang out together. They they hear a message from God's word. Um, we have worship with music. They go into small groups, um, and then we hang out, eat together. And so the the value of the relational connectability is um, very very significant. So that's a big part of having us having us in the gym and room one twenty. So um, I think I covered most of the things coming up. I mean, we'll have fall retreat in October and. Um, is there any specific kids ministry things that like big ticket things that happen in the fall just to, 
just to throw out there to families? I don't think there are. I mean, I know we'll have baptism and child mm-hmm. dedication, you know, and all that kind of stuff coming up in, in a month or so, but but not any big events specifically for kids' ministry. I just want to say this doesn't have to do with kids' ministry, but okay. I think it's huge that we're splitting middle school and high school. Um, I've observed the past three years just how um, – I mean, even I've talked about having fifth and sixth graders with the kids ministry. Like, I I feel like that's a smaller scale of what you see when you have the middle schoolers and high schoolers together. There's just a think about your sixth grader hanging out in a group of 11th and 12th, (laughs) even ninth and 10th. Like, it's it's just like size wise, I've heard like, gosh, these kids are huge. And, you know, like, it's just the things that they learn at school, not in their classes, but just like, worldly things are different in middle school and high school and how to approach those things. Like you said, you're going to talk about LGBTQ and, and the S word sex, like it's okay to say it. ah, Sex. sex. So (laughs) you're going to talk about those things at a level that should be used with high schoolers, a little more intentional probably, or hmm, the word's not graphic, but you know, like yeah. in more detail than you would with a sixth grader. Yes, right. Absolutely. And I think that's huge. As I think about Gunner aging, I'm like, I would, I would prefer him to be in a, a middle school only yeah. youth group so that he's, he is discipled in a, in a way that's best for him at that point in his life. And when he's in yeah. high school, I want him to, I want someone to talk to him about, boundaries in sex and what that looks like that yeah. you wouldn't talk to him about when he's a sixth grader. And For so sure. I think that's huge. I think we will see um, a huge difference in, in discipleship because those groups are broken up. So I think that is, is, is a, the right way for us to go within youth ministry here at Bethel. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're Sam and I uh, are really, really excited about just being able to do all we can to help, Help our, every student love God, love others, and serve the world. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, thanks so much for for being on today, um, Allison yes. and, and families. Thanks so much for your time listening. Again, our heart and desire was just to kind of give you just a just a picture of what this fall is going to be like, because um, we know there's a few adjustments and changes, and and the goal behind all of that is just to be more intentional, be more gospel centered. And so we want to let you guys know about that. If there is any questions that you guys do have that we didn't specifically mention under the umbrella uh, umbrella of what's coming up this fall, just just let us know. Just yeah. send us an email. Um, actually, if you just maybe face to face and buy buy me a cup of coffee, or I mean, I guess you do lattes and that kind of I stuff. I do. I love caramel macchiatos. Do you yeah. want all my orders on here? Oh, I mean, if you want maybe one other, I don't. All right. Should, maybe that's really it. Okay. Just give me a caramel macchiato. Right. So <laughs> we, I think, or at least I'll speak for myself. I prefer a face to face conversation. Yeah. More than a generic email or even just Same snag here. me on Sunday morning or whatever. But um, I like being able to get to know people. So For anyway. sure. So thanks, Allison. Thanks so much, fans. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the House on Fire podcast. Our prayer is that this podcast activates your home for Jesus. May the light of Christ burn bright through you and yours. Until next time.